Welcome to the Startups Marketing Podcast. In this season, we explore how marketers use AI to get better results for less money. Over the next weeks, we interview marketers who show us an AI-based marketing process that they actually use daily. In previous episodes, we've learned how to develop a buyer persona, how to write a marketing plan, or how to write LinkedIn posts that get more impressions than human-written posts. One of the biggest challenges when writing with AI tools is to prompt for high quality results. For that, we have to custom develop prompting sequences. We also have to feed the system samples of good work and we have to instruct it to analyze these samples according to our needs. Today's guest has a 20 year background in writing and he has been using AI writing tools for more than four years. He's passionate about teaching people how to use AI and he will show us how he writes LinkedIn posts that sound and read just like him. He works as a strategist and consultant, and he's the host of the Everyday AI Show. Today, Jordan Wilson will share how he trains an AI system to replicate his LinkedIn posts with an amazingly high authenticity. Let's listen to Jordan and see his prompt sequence that works so well. Hey Jordan, welcome to the Storylux Marketing Podcast and I'm very excited to have you on the show today, not only because you are a LinkedIn influencer around AI, but also because you have a background in journalism, which I find fascinating. But yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank Simon, thank you for having me. This is a conversation I'm extremely excited to, to talk about taking a deep dive on uh, how we can use different AI tools to uh, improve our writing and to make it write more like us. So yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. excited for this conversation. Uh, I think that's that's something that a lot of people also were like very excited in the beginning. Like, just it was fascinating to see suddenly how much it can do. And I think a lot of people have come to realize it looks great, but if you sort of like scratch the surface, it, it's not really that good writing. And I think now a lot of people try to understand. How, how can we tweak the system in a way that it really gets great writing? So very curious to hear what you have learned over the past couple of years. I think you've been in AI for a couple of years, so you are deeply experienced in that field. Maybe tell us a little about sort of your background in AI and what you do. So I'll, I'll do the, just the whole career background as fast mm. as possible. So I spent, spent seven years as a multimedia journalist, so have a writing background there. Uh, then I spent about almost a decade working in a nonprofit, but I was the uh, executive director, but we essentially just became an activation agency for Nike and Jordan brand. So I found myself creating a lot of content that was, um, you know, ended up being uh, highly visible uh, throughout the world. Um, and then I started about four years ago, started my own company called Celerant Agency. So we help uh, companies uh, create digital strategies. Uh, a lot of it now is based around, you know, how you can tap into generative AI. Um, and then also, you know, I started about four, four months ago, kind of a, a small media company called uh, Everyday AI. So, you know, putting mm. in hopefully what's extremely valuable information every single day on a live stream podcast and newsletter uh, to help people, you know, learn generative AI or to how people can use, you know, large language models to write better. So that's kind of a yeah. very brief background. But yeah, been using... Um, you know, the GPT technology essentially since it became publicly available, I think it was like very late 2020. Uh, so I've been using it for about two and a half, three years now. And, you know, uh, we've, we use, uh, it's not, I'm not exaggerating, but hundreds with an S pieces of uh, software uh, that have AI baked into it. I've used mm. probably at least 70 GPT writing tools. Uh, so yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've gone pretty, pretty deep. You should have been on the other podcast I was on today because I was asked, tell us about the best AI tools. I was like, I haven't really tried that many. I use a few, but uh, you would have been the expert. So <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about, the yeah, yeah that, that's the point I was making. And maybe you can correct me on this one, but my understanding is in the end, there's sort of like a few backend machines that you use and all these AI startups basically use an API and sort of like uh, use ChatGPT and all the others and they look different, but they basically do the same and sort of like their unique prompts, but it's it's not like that different. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I, I mean, yeah, more or less. Like so many of them are mm. essentially just you know wrappers. So it's it's software that wraps around the GPT uh, API, and you know they obviously train it to do kind of what they want it to do. But you know, more or less, so many of them are essentially just the same. You know, you know, slight. Some are trained slightly better. Some have mm. a better user interface or uh, more um, impactful features. But yes, I mean. I'd say they're all about 80% uh, the same, give or take. Yeah, and I think um, also that the, I don't know, like Jasper and all these tools, isn't it, isn't it like that they're sort of like limiting to a certain degree if you compare them to like ChatGPT where you can like prompt everything in detail just as you want and Jasper always comes like, okay, this is what you can do. It's sort of like within the confines of the platform, but if you want to go beyond that, you can't because it's sort of the platform. Is, is it like, is that accurate? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's some some accuracy in there. Yes, you know, I've we've been using it since it was called Jarvis, uh, you know, way, mm. way back. But there are still some benefits, um, I'd say, to using a tool like Jasper. Like one thing we've been mm. subscribed since it, you could subscribe to it. One thing I like with Jasper is you can, you know, kind of quote unquote prompt in the middle of a document, right? Which is something that you don't normally get in that traditional you know, AI chat back and forth interface. It's having that capability. And then, you know, Jasper also has what's called like a power editor where you can have like an open document essentially on one side of the browser. And then on the other, you can, um, you, you know, kind of, it, it makes it easier. You can use all their different mm. um, kind of pre-baked prompts, see what you like. Uh, another great benefit is you can, you know, ask for seven generations, you know, so sometimes working in ChatGPT, you might have to go back and forth a lot, but in a tool like Jasper, and there's plenty others that do that, you can get seven different generations on the left-hand side of your screen and then, uh, you know, add just the one that works into your document, but you can essentially run those commands anywhere within a working document, whereas in something like ChatGPT, Anthropic Cloud, uh, you, you know, any any of the traditional AI chat large language mm. models don't necessarily have that uh, functionality to, to work at any point in a document. And I think with that, we've already shed a light on the complexities of writing and these tools, which we want to dig into now a little deeper by looking into how you write, what prompts you use, and sort of like how you think about the process of writing. And I think you prepared something that we can see, that you can share, show us and share so we can sort of like pick your brain to understand your thinking when you write with the quality of a journalist. For sure. I'll start with, uh, before I even dive in and show anything, I want to start at the top. And I, I teach this, we do a, a free um, prompting course, essentially. Um, yeah. And the thing that I tell people is don't, like when you're working with a large language model and, and you know, this, uh, it's called uh, prime prompt polish. Don't, and, and, and you can apply it to almost any large language model, but you don't go in there with a prompting mindset. You, you have to go in there with the mindset of you're working with a model. A large language model is a model and it is there for you to mold, right? So I think there's this, you, you know, you, you see a lot of uh, things on the internet and essentially what goes quote unquote viral are people sharing prompts, right? So that's what we think. We think as content creators, as writers, okay, we need to find the best prompt. Like, like let me see which one has the most views. Let me see which one's getting shared the most. Let me go buy some. So if that's your mindset, let me just tell people listening, stop. Like that's, that's terrible. That's a terrible mindset, especially if you wanna learn how to use a large language model is shift your mindset. You're not prompting, right? You are working with a large language model, which is, two incredibly different things. Um, so if you go in there with a mindset of, I'm gonna find uh, this this great prompt online, and then it's gonna say, insert my writing sample here, and then mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit enter once, and I'm gonna get high quality writing, you will be sorely disappointed. It will fail almost every time. So I just I just wanted to get that piece mm -hmm. out of the way. It's, 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 a, it's half rant, half extremely <laughs> sound advice of uh, you, you just have to shift your mindset when you're prompting uh, because it's, it's, it's not a, you know, copy, paste, enter. That's in, in my opinion, that's garbage in, garbage out. Thank you for the rant. Yes, now that I, now that I have that rant out of the way, let's, uh, let's see if I can't share, share my screen here and we can go over a couple of things. So, okay, I'm gonna go over a couple technical things as well. Mm -hmm. If you're using 
GPT-3.5 or a free version of ChatGPT, you are not going to get good results. Simple as that. Um, I always tell people, if you want good outputs, you have to use the best software or the best tool for the job, right? So, But it's $20 a month. What's that? But it's $20 a month. It pays for itself by hitting enter yeah. once. If you know sure, that's what I said. It's like, um, yeah. I would, again, I use ChatGPT a lot, probably more than a lot of people, right? <laughs> like, I, I, I was trying to count. I'm somewhere, you know, I'm somewhere between, uh, you know, 600 to 700 hours that I've spent just in ChatGPT, right? Not mm. counting all the other tools I use. But once you know how to use it, like, I would pay $2,000 a month to use ChatGPT Plus because you can literally automate and run an entire business if you know what you're doing specifically with plugins. But that's not the uh, that's not the the, the focus uh, of this. But I'm gonna do another episode. Yes, yes. So y y you know, but I bring that up is because you'll see uh, on my screen here, and I'll try to try to zoom in a little bit. I have plugins enabled, which you should, right? Mm. You should always. So whether you want to feed uh, ChatGPT examples of your writing from a website if you want to share you know a youtube video of you speaking so it understands how you talk um, you have to have the correct plugins enabled if you want to share a pdf uh, this is uh we teach what's called plugin packs because in chat gpt you can only have three plugins active and you can't you know re-add you can't start with one and say oh it'd be, it would be great to train chat gpt on how i talk so here's a youtube video well if you don't start with it you, you can't go back, right? So you want to have one chat where you are essentially training this chat to be your employee. Um, and before you start, you know, and this employee is going to be your writer. And before you start, you have to make sure it has the proper tools and information, right? If it, if at any point, if we need to clarify, let me know, because I'm just going to keep talking and keep, keep sipping on my water. Yeah. What, are, what are the plugins you're using here? The three? Yes. I'm a dork, Simon. I've tested every single chat GPT plugin that has website access. There's 18 of them and I see what capabilities they have. So this is kind of my, my go-to quote unquote plugin pack. So I have, uh, again, these icons are super small, but the first one I have is browser op, uh, this, this little, uh, orange guy mm. here. Uh, and then I have, uh, this is YouTube summaries from a company called Adafy, and this is Vox script. So those are the three plugins that I have enabled. Um, and they allow me to, what do they do? Yeah. Uh, so browser op and Vox script are essentially the same, but, um, one does not read PDFs and one does not read YouTube videos. Uh, so if you combine them, the, the two of them, you can essentially access anything on the internet. You can query, which is way different than being able to read information. Um, and then, uh, the YouTube video summary, uh, it just does, it's, it's just that plugin is, uh, provides much greater depth. Um, and understanding when uploading a YouTube video versus the other plugins. So that's kind of like we have one mm. power, one trick pony, and then we have two Swiss army knives. And, and you know, so that way we can train, if we're trying to ch train a chat to sound exactly like me, which is this example, um, I can at any time, you know, I have a daily podcast. I can drop in the podcast and say, analyze everything. How am I speaking? What's my cadence? Um, and it can do it for me. But in the example... For you, Simon, and for, for the listeners and watchers, I did it kind of old school so we can we could talk through it. Uh, yeah. So the way I start this off is you, you'll see I'm giving a direction and then I'm asking a question like, are you ready to go? So normally I would go through a much stronger priming process. This is just an example. So uh, we, you know, we can't go through the whole process in a short amount of time. Mm. So here's, here's what I'm doing. So I'm telling chat GPT. Uh, I, I'll read this. So I'm saying for each sample, you will take your time and analyze my writing step by step. Please carefully critique each piece and tell me these things. So I'm asking ChatGPT. I'm not saying write like me. That's not what I'm concerned about. Mm. This is a training process. So I'm saying describe the tone of voice. Describe my writing cadence and characteristics. Take note and tell me the formatting, sentence length, number of words per piece. So I'm giving it multiple examples. Paragraph length, number of emojis, emojis to text percentage, etc. And then I'm asking to break down my sentence structure trends. So to tell me in each piece that I give it, what, how many total uh, sentences do I have that are three words or less? 
three to five words, six to 10 words. And then also, what is the percentage? So if I have a, a 15 sentence paragraph or a post that I write, what percentage of those are three word sentences or 30 word sentences? Because if you want to uh, chat GPT or, or cloud or anything else to replicate your voice, you can't just give it a couple examples and, and say, go. You have mm. to establish facts and parameters for then the large language model to follow, if that makes sense, right? Perfect, yeah. So again, I'm not, there's no copying, copying and pasting prompts, right? This is a conversation. This I'm gonna scroll through it because there's a lot of back and forth. So I'm making sure something that we teach in our course is you never just prompt. You say, what questions do you have, mm. right? Because a lot of times ChatGPT will have a lot of questions and you'll have to go back and forth. Uh, but we get right into it with ChatGPT. It, it kind of explains what I want it to do. And then I go back and forth. I share a bunch of posts, right? So in this example, I'm trying to train ChatGPT and I did it side by side, uh, side by side with um, Anthropic Cloud. That's another thing I tell people, you're gonna go through and train a chat in ChatGPT as an example. You might as well have another, you know, split your screen and do the same thing in something like uh, Cloud or Bard or Bing chat, pick your poison because you're going through the process. You might as well get, you know, double the output or, you know, two mm. X the options. Um, so you'll see here, I mean, I'll scroll through it, but just to show your audience, this is a process. This is a conversation. This is back and forth. Now we're seeing posts that you copied and you're showing yes. all the posts to the system. Yes. These are posts that I wrote on LinkedIn. And I saved some that I thought reflected my true writing style. And I'm sharing these about, you know, three to five at a time. So normally, you know, what you could do with plugins to make this a little faster is you could just upload, you know, in a PDF or like I said, a YouTube video, which is why I have uh, the, these plugins enabled. But I thought for illustrative purposes, let's actually see what's going mm. on and kind of uh, see and walk and talk through the process. So cool. uh, to hit fast forward after each, you know, three to five post. I'm asking ChatGPT to analyze, okay? So, okay. So you'll see here, it's ChatGPT responds as I told it to. I'm not telling it to write, I'm telling it to analyze. And it's saying post one, here's the tone and characteristics. Here's the formatting. Emoji to text percentage, 6%. You know, uh, oh, okay. 20% of my sentences are three to five words. 32% are six to 10 words. 20% are 11 to 15 words, right? So. Hmm. When people, people look for shortcuts, Simon, they think I can just find a, a prompt on the internet, put in an example of my writing and ChatGPT is going to nail it. It's not how it works. You have right? to tell it what to analyze and what to look for so that it really understands what you are interested in. Correct. You You've written a sentence now. with 41 words? Yes. Oh, of course. Oh, That's I mean, great writers. Um, there's, there's a great book that, um, you know, if, if people are listening, you should go read it. It's, uh, probably, I think the best book on, on copywriting, it's called on writing well by William, mm. uh, Zinzer in the book. He, he talks about that. Like you need to have sometimes sentences that are one to three words. And then sometimes you need to have sentences that are 40 plus words, right? Those long winding sentences that take you on a magical journey and you're not sure where you're going to go and it's up and it's down and it's you know it's it's, it's mm. the same thing how how i try to speak as well right sometimes i i speak in short sentences and then sometimes i go on a long rant with with it's a run-on sentence with with no punctuation right but if i want chat gpt or other large language models to write just like me i can't just give it examples and say go i have to mm. identify and establish you know, almost not to like a quote unquote scientific formula, but I have to give it specific data points, right? Like that's, it, it is a model. And if you set those, those, those parameters and those data points and you give it exactly what you are looking for based on your inputs, your, your output, like I said, it's going to be better. We'll, we'll, we'll fast forward. We'll but that's an interesting point you're making because that goes back to you have to know what what good is, what you want, what is direct you want to take. Because if you don't know that, you cannot guide the system and just does what it thinks is like possible or what it wants to do. And I think that is probably something a lot of people 
struggle because if they don't have a clear vision of what they want in the first place, then ChatGPT can't help you to get to that vision that you haven't defined. Exactly. And like that's Simon, that's actually great to bring up because I'd, I'd like to say I'm a, an above average writer. You know, I'm not the best in the world, but I've been getting paid to write in some shape or form for 20 years. So when I, my inputs hopefully are above average, but here's the thing. If you're not a great writer and if you're trying to train ChatGPT to write like you, and if you do it correctly, <laughs> it's going to write like you. So if you're not trying to be mean, but if you're a poor writer and if you try to get ChatGPT to write like you, and if you go through the process that I'm laying out right mm. now, you're going to get poor writing on the outside, right? Like the output's going to, you know, it, it's going to be bad. Or if the, the scenario is okay, I know I'm not a good writer. Let's take good writing as a sample so the system understands what good writing is and what I should be doing. But then also it requires to, first of all, you know what good writing is so you can find the good pieces that you wanted to emulate. And if that's the problem, I don't know what good writing is, then I struggle to find these pieces, struggle to instruct the system. So that's that's a great point. Um, and I think as, as weird as this sounds, even the definition of, of good writing, I think, is changing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, it, people people might not agree with that, but I think consumer behaviors in the age of generative AI are changing rapidly. You, you know, I think what's what someone might look at today as, oh, this was a good piece of, of copywriting. If you looked at it five years ago, maybe not. You know, you might have viewed it and said, mm. oh, this, this seems overly... Uh, sensationalized. This seems a little urgent. This seems a little over the top. But now I think, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, that type of copy is what moves people a little bit more now because we are drowning now in, mm. in, in cop because I, I, because of, I think, large language models that, you know, people are putting out more and more and more content. So if you're seeing more and more average to above average content, your brain starts to tune it out. And even if five mm. or 10 years ago, if that would have been considered great writing, um, the consumer's behavior and their appetite changes when all we're getting is the same stuff over and over. Uh, so yeah, even like what is mm. good writing? I think that that's changed Change. so much. Uh, so much reason. Uh, <laughs> These are the thoughts. Cool. Let's, 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 yeah. let, let's, let's continue. <laughs> yeah. So I'll kind of, I'll kind of go through the rest quickly because it's, it's much of the same, but you know, I'm going through each one of these posts and I'm having ChatGPT break it down to a post by post, uh, very analytical level of, you know, mm. like percentages and, and it's consistent, right? So again, I go through and I do this a lot and I share, I think in this example, I probably shared about 15 to uh, maybe 10 to 15 uh, examples. Another thing you have to keep in mind is memory, right? Because large language models have something called tokens and they will start to lose their memory uh so just just another piece there you know um clouds memory quote unquote is a little longer at a hundred thousand tokens uh chat gpt who knows what it actually is you know you hear it's it's 8k tokens and then they say oh just kidding we're extending it to thirty-two thousand tokens for everyone and if you're not a dork like me tokens is essentially uh the amount of context that uh you know a large language model will hold on to until it starts forgetting things so you know, if you are going back and forth in ChatGPT, as an example, and trying to train it to write like you, it will start to forget eventually, mm. you, you know. So I'm sure people have gone through that process where they're starting something, you know, uh, you know, in ChatGPT and it starts great and then it just starts to suck. Uh, that's why. So we do, mm. we, we teach something called like memory recall, where every so often you essentially have to quiz ChatGPT and you have to get, you have to make sure it's not forgetting anything, but you can also use that as a memory recall, because if it's forgetting something, you can re-remind ChatGPT of something, you know, in the, um, that it forgot. So it's becoming more and more human. Yeah. Is this, is this too dorky, Simon? Is this, is this? No, no, no. It's uh, perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. No, this love is, it. it's, it's a deep dive, right? So we're going, we're going deep. Uh, but yeah, let me just kind of scroll through here. So here mm. we go. I'm on post 14, still doing the same thing. And then I, almost, almost to the end here. So then I said, and again, this is this was just just for you. I, I put this model, quote unquote, this chat together just for you, Simon. Uh, I I have other ones that are a little more intricate, but it would have taken too long to go through. But I said, based on all the samples I've given, 
please give a recap of everything I've sent over. Please be as detailed and specific as possible. Give me an exhaustive, exhaustive recap of the analysis. Okay. So now out of all those 15 posts that I shared and it, um, you know, broke each one down individually, it's, it's giving me a, a high level overview of everything, all in mm. one um, kind of response here. So now it's spotting trends in formatting and set and structure across, because here's the thing, even there's, there's even going to be inconsistencies in the type of writing that I gave it. Right. Um, so this is an opportunity for me to go back and forth with chat GBT. If it does spot inconsistencies and say, oh no, you know, that, that one post, that was more of a, an anomaly. So I, I, I normally wouldn't say something like that. So uh, that's an interesting thing. So how do you go about that? I mean, these 15 posts, did you choose them based on like coherence to push, push it in a certain way? Or did you just take like, okay, the ones that like best? Because I assume if they are too different, then the system struggles with finding the commonalities and then it's becoming sort of like more the average. And then it's not really that insightful. Yes, that's, that's a great point. So I wouldn't, that's why I took as an example, all written LinkedIn posts. And, and so, yes, what I chose were all very similar. Um, whereas, you know, I would write much differently if I were writing a website copy on a landing page than on a LinkedIn post yeah. or if I was writing social media captions. So yeah, I'm not mixing and matching, uh, just different, uh, types of writing that I like, or, Hey, these are the best mm. examples. I'm, I'm creating it within one very narrow, uh, vertical, which is LinkedIn post, right. Um, and, and, and not even just LinkedIn posts. Cause I have some LinkedIn posts that I'll write and it's introducing a carousel. Right. So those might not get into the depth and the context is normal. So even in within the LinkedIn bucket, you sort of like go deeper and sort of specialize and so on certain posts that you did on LinkedIn, excluding other posts that you did on LinkedIn. Exactly. Uh, yep. And 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 all ones that were kind of similar, right? Because in this in this case, yeah, I've I've written posts um that are maybe more quote unquote like softer stance or more quote unquote politically correct. So if I want to train, you know, ChatGPT or Anthropic or any kind of model that I'm working with, I want to make sure that it can go to the quote unquote extreme that I want to get it to. So, you know, I, I took kind of the, you know, my hardest hitting post that, um, you, you know, that I felt my voice was, you know, kind of, um, not dampered at all. Mm. So, you know, when I'm finding examples, I'm finding those that in my example, that I want the most extreme or, you know, all the way to one side of the spectrum. And I'm not finding those things that are, you know, a little uh, softer in the middle, because again, I want ChatGPT to, to kind of be, be able to recognize my, my, my tone, my trend, my cadence. So, that, that's yeah. a great point with this of like, with finding what's at a really extreme, because we often see with writing and people that sort of like when ghost writing, they sort of like are afraid to be extreme. They're afraid to show the values. They sort of like want to be safe. And that is not what people resonate with in good writing. I mean, you've got to be sort of like clear in your values, what you stand for, what you're against. And then sort of the writing becomes more interesting. And you're right. I mean, the same we have to show the system so it understands um, the extremities of our writing so it can replicate that. Otherwise, it's going to be very bland in the middle. Exactly. Um, so here's, here's, I guess the grand reveal. And I wish I had more time to even go back and forth. Um, you know, because normally after this first, so I'm saying, you know, now write a post in my exact style, following the outline that you just detailed. And I'm saying, please, you know, essentially please make sure to, um, all of these things that you analyze, make sure that you follow all of those rules. And then I'm saying, please write a short post, uh, geared towards small business owners about, and then I say, you know, I just, through an example out there, something I might talk about, you know, how marketers are just salespeople that they just want to, you know, uh, tell you things to make you buy and that you should grill a marketing agency before hiring one. Right. So then we have a post here and I think it's, um, again, this was this, this one I put together just for you. So after this first, um, output, I would normally go through and, and go back and forth on this one example, um, mm -hmm. to tighten it up. So that's kind of, you know, what we teach in polishing. Um, I would go through and tighten this up again. I don't, I, I, I didn't can't, can't teach this whole thing in a, you know, 30 to 40 minute podcast. But after this first example, after you train it, 
you would normally then go back and forth, um, kind of uh, steering and, and navigating it, kind of say that's that's where you park it. But you know, here even this this one example, this sounds like me, yeah. right? Like saying, you know, I read this. This sounds like me. It's because. You know, you you see sh short sentences, right? Like here's a couple five word sentence. Uh, we have a four word sentence, um, and then we have a longer, you know, some longer sentences and some longer paragraphs. You know, this one's a, you know, looks like about a twenty ish word sentence mm. uh, right there. You know, this one again, this this one's kind of a, a drag on sentence a little bit, but you know, you're seeing there the all of those data points I was asking for earlier. I would argue this one, you know, this one's a little emoji heavy. So uh, it's it's not what I would have done is I would have said, hey, the emoji to text ratio is too high in this. I would have said, you know, uh, the the percentage of, you know, this uh, length of sentences is too short. But this output right here, like it's actually really good. And it's something, you know, if, if people have tried to do this before, you spend way more time on the back end. Like I'd say for every five minutes you skip on the front end, you're going to pay for it with 30 minutes on the back end. So mm -hmm. that's why I, I really, you know, in our prime prompt polish, I say that, like, you can't skip over the priming parts, you, you know, uh, because you're going to pay for it on the back end, but this is pretty, pretty usable. It sounds, mm. I mean, it, it, I mean, I've been reading my own writing for a long time. <laughs> it sounds like me, which is weird. And it's, it's pretty, it's pretty okay. Yeah. The same thing in Anthropic here, just, you know, in case anyone cares, went through the same process. Um, ChatGPT does better, I think, in most regards. It looks like uh, Anthropic did a little, a uh, Cloud, Cloud2 did a little bit better, you know, with, with not putting uh, too many, as many emo uh, emojis, but it's, I mean, this is literally how I talk, you know, um, this is my right. So, yeah. That's fascinating, yeah. That's the process. That's the process. You know, it's... But emphasis so in, in the end, it's like a super long prompt because you just like prime the whole system on your writing style and to give it a lot of material, which you could sort of consider as being part of the prompt, to get one post at the end that then very well emulates your style and your your tonality. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, and it's you know, that's that's why we say like in priming, it's a conversation. Right. Mm. Uh, you, you have to go back and forth. You have to give feedback. It's, you, you know, like, like I try to teach people, it's, you are training in this specific chat, you know, we call them expert chats. Um, you are training that chat in whatever large language model you're using to do one very specific thing at an expert level. So you have to, just like you would, if, if you hired any type of employee, you would make sure that there's time for conversation. You wouldn't, the employee wouldn't sit down and you would say, all right, employee, here's the handbook. It's a hundred pages. We're not talking, go do the job. Hmm. That would suck, but that's how people that. use, that's how people use large language models because, you know, people are out on the internet saying, use my prompts, use my prompts. Uh, no, don't uh. use anyone's prompts. People should stop. <laughs> that's, that's my hot. I love it. Yeah, I love it. You know, no, all, so I, I have friends, I, you know, friends and connections on LinkedIn who probably don't like me saying that because they're trying to sell prompts, but you shouldn't use them. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you for saying that because I, I don't know, I get angry when I see these these viral posts where they share like three prompts and like I don't know, here are the ten best prompts to do like everything from making coffee to mowing your lawn, and it's like uh, five thousand likes and it's like. What am I supposed to do with this? I can't really use it. It's sort of like yeah. useless to me. Like because it's not doing what I want. Yeah. I I will say I will say this. I'll I'll give people credit because it does take time to put out that type of content. And if nothing else, it gets people using, hopefully, generative mm. AI, which I'm I'm very passionate about, right? Like I'm I'm always trying to push the technology forward. I'm trying to educate people. So at least it gets point taken yeah. because it shows people what is possible. And I think that is Speaking from my personal experience, like the, the, the ongoing amazement at like what you can do that I didn't even think I could do. And um, seeing these prompts, it gives me a lot of ideas what I could actually do and then, but I still have to figure it out myself. Absolutely. Excellent. I think you have a hard cut, so I don't want to take your time any longer. 
Jordan. That was super interesting. And um, I'm always excited to see how everybody has their own process. It was great to see how you understand how to use your own writing, which brings me back to my thing that I want to stress, um, that you have to know what you want. And if you don't know what you want, then you will not get it. And we can clearly see in your case, you have good content that you showed, meaning you know what you want, and then you can train it on like, okay, give me more of what is good and good looks like that. So it was great seeing. I, I like people, you know, I like to show people kind of, uh, you know, again, I'm not perfect. I'm not the expert in this, um, but you, you know. To another gates, there have... are no experts. We are all learning. <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, you just have to learn how to use it. You, you know, the analogy mm. I use often is if you were trying to learn how to use a browser and the internet in the early days, and if someone gave you a spreadsheet and they said, here's the 10,000 best websites, that's not how you would learn how to use a browser. You have to uh. go and you have to learn it and you have to click around and you have to type things, right? So it's the same thing with prompting. If you're just trying to use other people's prompts, you're not actually learning how to use a large language model. You're not mm. learning generative AI. And that's one of the most important skill sets. It's one of the most fundamentally crucial things that uh, humans need to do is we need to learn how to work with generative AI and large language models. It's it's a process. You have to go in and do it. But that's why I was, you know, uh, happy and excited to kind of at least show, show my personal process. Fantastic. So people that are interested in your you do a daily newsletter you do a weekly video what what can we see what what can we get from you where do people find you yeah you can find me anywhere i guess but uh go to uh go to your everydayai.com so yes simon we have a daily live stream where we bring on experts and people can ask questions um we had on the head of legal from WooCommerce today, you know, so the wow. parent companies automatic, they literally can tr not control, but 45% of the internet is from, um, WordPress, right? So, you know, our, our listeners got to ask legal related questions, uh, mm -hmm. about content on the internet. So we do a live stream every single morning at 7 30 AM central standard time. And then we, it goes out on podcasts, you know, about 30 to 40 minutes later on wherever you get your podcast. And then we also recap it all. Um, you know, if listening and watching isn't your thing, we recap it all in a daily newsletter. So yeah, every single day, Monday through Friday, we do all of those things. Cool. John, thank you so much. And I guess people can find you on LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. But Hey, FYI, all the posts I write, even though I've trained chat GBT to write just like me, they're all mine. It's, I, I know that's weird. I talk about generative AI and use it so much. I like to go old school. I enjoy writing. They're all mine. I just like to put that out there, you know, so so people don't call me uh, call me a bot. Oh, I, and, and they feel all authentic. Cool. <laughs> Jordan, thank you so much and uh, see you on your morning call. Thanks again, Simon. Appreciate it. Thank you.